Here is a 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander in celestial silver over black interior. This is the Platinum tier. What is the difference between the Turbo Platinum and the Hybrid Platinum Max? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. To start off, we're gonna go through a few of the trim options on the turbo and then we're going to go into the hybrid to show you the differences between them and some pros and cons in the front led headlights and daytime running so that's going to be standard but when you get into the xle you will not receive the fog lights you have to go to the limited trim in which this is standard it's led eight inches of clearance is going to be on all trims and i like that even when we get to the platinum tier it's not all chromed out they keep the chrome housing over the top of the toyota emblem when you get into the hybrid you're gonna get the blue badging, the grill will get the gloss black elements, and a touch of the matte black that's going to surround the lower. All trims receive the same suspension, whether you go turbo or hybrid. So you're gonna get the McPherson front strut suspension, multi-link rear suspension. When you get to the platinum tier, you're going to get these chrome multi-spoke alloy wheels. The Limited will not get the chrome, and the XLE will have a 18 inch kind of looks like a rental car, which I think with this celestial silver, it looks all right because it's not, again, too much chrome. The major difference is what's housed underneath the hood. 2.4 liter, four cylinder turbocharge, producing 262 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. You're going to lose 97 horsepower when you option the turbo opposed to the hybrid. 90 pound-feet of torque less than the hybrid. MPGs, 20 to the city, 26 for the highway. When you get into the hybrid, 26 MPGs for the city, 27 MPGs for the highway. It's not a huge difference there. And because it's so much difference in power, I would have liked to see an increase of towing. Towing is the same on all trims, 5,000 pounds. The matte black is going to surround the fenders in the side skirts. The side window trim gets a touch of the chrome. And again, not putting chrome everywhere, which is more traditional when you get to the platinum tiers for Toyota. The rear is going to be a little bit different depending on the tiers. When you get into the XLE, it's standard LED lights. You will not get the light bar. That goes on the Limited, and on the Platinum, it will give you the digital rear view mirror, which is right underneath it. The lower is going to get the matte black. Because this is a turbo, I would have liked to see some exhaust. I know. Toyota doesn't offer the V6 anymore. It's the turbocharged or the hybrid variant. Just because it's a little bit, it sounds more sporty when you're in a turbocharged, even though the hybrid max will be faster on your zero to 60s. Power lift gate going into 20.6 cubic feet of storage. This has height adjustment, JBL sound system. Underneath, you get a little bit of storage in an area to put the privacy cover. Grand Highlander kick plates, split fold. The third row at a 60-40 split. It's gonna increase the cargo to almost 58 cubic feet. Fold down those captain seats. Increasing cargo to 97.5 cubic feet. This is the turbocharged. We need to go inside, start it up, so you can hear that exhaust though. bucket seats. 10-way power seat adjustment is standard for the driver. 8-way power seat adjustment for the passenger. Heated and ventilated can be an option for the limited trim, which it's standard here. Memory for the driver. Headroom and leg room. Because it's longer, you're going to get a little bit more length in each row. The passenger starts off with a USB and a storage pocket upgraded JBL sound system. It's 11 speakers, including a subwoofer and a little storage pocket for the passenger. Going into a 12.3 infotainment screen, optional for the navigation, you'll have a monthly subscription. AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth audio, Sirius XM, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We have the bird's eye view, which you click this view button here, and you can see the vehicle surroundings. You can pause that, and you can also adjust it so it's more wider appearance. Put it into reverse. We have a 360 degree reverse camera, full trajectory. You can also change different camera angles for the reverse to make it more of a 180. 
standard tri-climate control, two USBs, QI wireless charging pad, and an area that you can put another cell phone with the key fob for the new Grand Highlander. Leather around the shifter, gloss black, and you're going to get the satin aluminum that's going to wrap around. We get the driver mode select. It's going to be more sporty. This slides open. You have a little tray right here that you can take out to make it a deep storage pocket with a 12 volt charger. And a little area here for the second row for some change going into a three spoke leather wrap steering wheel, gloss black elements, adaptive cruise control lane keep assist. 12.3 digital gauge cluster that is configurable so you can change out different settings to make it look a little bit more sporty for you or more understated with a heads up display and a digital rear view mirror which is only on the platinum tier a large panel moonroof that goes to the second row the door panels and the dash integrate in together you get the wood inlays that also follow in through the dash with the contrast stitching and the satin aluminum that's going to wrap around all the air vents and it has a circular effect that goes into everyday materials that's going to be on the top. Soft to touch, one touch up and down for all the windows, and a large storage pocket with the beverage holder carved out. For the back seats, headroom. For the second row, headroom. And leg room. Because these are captain seats, they can adjust forward, which would make absolutely no reason for me to sit in the second row. You can slide this back. But the nice thing about captain seats, and you also have this in the third row, is when you find the lever, it's here. You can recline these and you can adjust this to make it a little bit more easy and user friendly. Cup holders in the center areas for iPads or Androids with another storage tier in the back. This is removable so you could use this just as a pass through and it's pretty quick access, very lightweight. Two USB ports with a home plug, heated ventilated second row seats in the third clerk in the third climate control. Storage behind both of the front seats. The door panel starts off with the manual sunshades, we get air vents in the headliner, door panel gets the same materials and configuration that's in the front, it's just longer than the standard Highlander with a storage pocket in the top. And you can kind of use this as a storage pocket with a long storage pocket and a beverage holder carved out. To enter to the third row, pull the lever and slide forward because we're over six inches more in length, it makes this back seat one of the best in class for leg space as you're going to see. Putting the seat back, it's going to be a little bit tight still for somebody that's over six foot. And this is adjusted and all the way back. Feet space is going to be shared by the rails. Three cup holders on each side with the USB air vents in the headliner. And for headroom, it's not bad. I have the seats reclined. Let's see how I look. With them reclined, headroom is a lot better. Leg space in the center is actually the best because you can stretch out your legs. But it's going to be tight for butt and shoulder space because of the way the cup holders bulge out. 262 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque, sport mode. The engine filters in pretty good. I always like the exhaust note to filter in. It has a little bit of a drone note to it, but it's not over the top, so I like that. Is 97 horsepower a huge difference? For your zero to 60, yes. For your MPGs, not so much. You're getting six more for the city and one more for the highway. 90 pound-feet of torque is going to push you back a little bit more so, but the same towing capacity, same suspension setup, so would I do the savings? I probably would. That's going to take me to some pros and cons, starting with the pros. When you're optioning the Grand Highlander, they make it very user-friendly. You go up the tier and you get the features, similar to pretty much every automotive industry nowadays. The good thing here is they do the same thing for the hybrid, so you don't have to go full hybrid in order to get the same features or same towing capacity. But on the con, it's hard for me to say go hybrid max. Yes, you know I love extra power and performance, but I'm also reasonable and I'm not getting extra features other than that. Everything's the same. Going back to some pros, you get ventilated second row seats. This is not found usually in a Toyota or any vehicle like that in its segment. You would have to go more expensive to a luxury line like Lexus, in which 
Some luxury vehicles like Infiniti, they don't even offer that for the second row. In standard tri-climate control, which is a nice feature in the sense that you're getting a larger vehicle, it's over 200 inches, it's longer than the standard Highlander. They don't option a V6 anymore for the Highlander. So you're getting the same powertrain, but it doesn't feel overly heavy when you push the pedal. That's the, that's the pro that I'm talking about because when you get to these links, the first thing people start saying is, well, how does it feel? Does it feel like a heavy vehicle? Well, not really. Motivation is good. You will be hitting about two and a half to three RPMs to get the vehicle motivated in which most vehicles with these type of powertrains, whether it's turbocharged or even V6, you're going to be doing this. So I don't find a negative in that. And it also helps with the carbon deposit buildup because you do want to hit a little bit higher RPM. But the biggest con with the Grand Highlander is the fact that you can get the limited trim and nearly get every single feature that you have in the Platinum, excluding the digital rear view mirror, heads up display, ventilated third row seat. So it's not a huge amount of amenities that you're going to get different. Yes, you do have to option some, but most of them will be coming standard when you get to that tier. On the Pro, it's not that much of a price gap if you're going from the Limited to the Platinum tier. The only other cons that I can find with the vehicle is they did not give a pass-through considering how big this center cluster is. And I would have liked the opening to kind of open up like a traditional vehicle. I understand what they're doing they're keeping the same segment as the highlander and just making it a little bit better and more grand for the grand highlander it just feels like it'd be a little bit more optimal for storage capacity i like the width it does feel wider it does feel a little bit longer but it still has the same motivation and capabilities as a highlander just like I was saying, a little bit more grand. Comparable rivals like Mazda, Hyundai, and Honda, or even Subaru, this is going to have the most leg space in class, but it's also a longer vehicle. The same thing with cargo capacity. It's gonna have the same towing capacity, and in some cases, it might have more so, depending on the tier that you option. So overall, I think Toyota did a a huge step forward coming out with the Grand Highlander, giving a lot more luxury in class and simplifying the trim, not giving you 5,000 different options, just making it a three tier. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Platinum for our car review.